Hello and welcome friends for this particular presentation. In this, I am going to discuss about the local attraction in compass survey. In last two lectures, we got acquainted with bearing its use in land surveying, the meridians that we refer to, as well as the equipment that we adopt to measure the bearings. While taking the bearings, we may come across some difficulties such as local attraction. Hence, there is a need to understand exactly what is local attraction, how to assess the presence of it, and after knowing its presence, how the observed readings can be corrected by applying certain corrections. We will also solve some numericals based on the actual field data. So, as you learn the content, you will be able to define the local attraction, detect the presence of the local attraction and correct the data to work out the correct bearings and subsequently corrected included angles which are to be used in order to plot the networks and hence the features. In the last presentation, just I had mentioned this particular term. It is well known fact as current flows through certain wire, it produces magnetic field around it. This magnetic field and its strength will go on decreasing as we go away from the source, but whatever it come across, it will be influencing. Maybe equipment, maybe people, maybe walls, maybe any property and all such thing the way you see. So, because of this particular magnetic field, as it is influencing the magnetic north, which could have been shown in its absence, such kind of magnetic influences are called as local attraction. This local attractive forces could also be natural, such as masses of magnetic rock, iron ore, or it could also be artificial, such as proximity of the steel structures, rails, iron pipes, current carrying wires, underground network of certain steel pipes, and similar things. Such structures are bound and are not removable. For example, if we consider the use of chain, ranging rod, arrows and some similar accessories during our survey work, we can keep it away so that it won't be unnecessarily influencing the magnetic field generated by the compass we will be using. Hence, such influences or such equipment accessories should not be considered as local attraction. In the initial lecture, we had thought of magnetic meridian generated by the magnetic needle and as we are dealing with plane survey, we can consider the magnetic north and the meridian 
could be considered to be parallel to each other. As these two meridians are assumed to be parallel to each other, line AB, which is making some inclination with respect to this particular magnetic north, for it we can measure the forebearing as well as backbearing. So, if the difference in between the forebearing and the backbearing for a line like AB is of 180 degrees, both the stations could be treated as free from local attraction. There could be a specific case that they could be experiencing this influence with the same magnitude but it won't affect it won't affect the calculations that we wish to do so the next thing is we wish to apply corrections for local attraction so here the corrections can be applied in two ways. The first method is use of unaffected intruder angles. Let's try to understand why the term unaffected is included here. Say this is the magnetic north that we wish to have in the normal circumstances. With respect to that, bearings could be measured as theta 3 for line OA and theta 4 for line OB. Hence, the difference of this particular theta 4 and theta 3 will give us included angle AOB which is shown as theta here. Say, because of certain magnetic substance, if this north is not remaining north but it is deflected towards left and attains this n dash direction, still we will be able to take the bearings for line OA as well as for line OB which are shown to be theta 1 and theta 2 respectively here. As we determine the difference, we will be able to get the same value of theta as we worked out it by the difference of theta 3 and theta 4. Hence, though the magnetic north is influenced here, the amount of influence, the magnitude of the influence being same, it will be nullified and hence the value of the included angle won't be affected as such. This is the principle that we use in this particular method. Let's consider a typical case. Say, here what you see is line AB for which the forebearing is 60 degree and backbearing is of 241 degrees. As we work out the difference in between 60 and 241, it is obvious here that the line AB is not free from local attraction. Say, by some or other means, we have confirmed that the station A is free from local attraction. Hence, having the four bearing of the AB at 60 degrees, its back bearing should be 240 degrees. But as we see here, the bearing is 241 degrees. That means the station B should be locally affected. Here, by making use of the principle of 
unaffected intruder angles. We can determine the intruder angle at B simply by subtracting 115 degrees from 241 degrees. Hence, the intruder at B should be 126 degrees. Here, having the intruder angle and correct back bearing of the AB, we can work out correct forebearing of BC as corrected back bearing of AB minus angle B which gives 114 degrees. So again here the difference in between the forebearing of BC and back bearing of the BC should be of 180 degrees. So by making use of this principle and the intruder angle further worked out at C by referring to the subsequent survey line, we can continue with our calculations. If we are dealing with closed travels, say for example, here in this particular travels is A, B, C, D, which is circumscribing, which is enveloping this particular piece of the land. Here, we can have the forebearing and back bearing determined for each of the stations. We can work out the inclusive angles. As we work out the inclusive angles, here we can check whether the sum of all included angles work out to be 2 and minus 490 degrees. On the similar lines, we can also apply the check for exterior angles as 2 and plus 490 degrees. Say, if there is some instrumental observational personal error, that means we won't be getting the desired sum as 2n minus 490 degrees or 2n plus 490 degrees. So under such circumstances, if the difference in the sum that is actually worked out and the one which is theoretically worked out is not much, if it is acceptable, again you have to take into account the permissible error concept that we have discussed earlier. And assuming that the error is within permissible limits, it can be distributed equally at each of the stations and accordingly we can proceed with the calculations. Second method deals with applying the correction at each of the stations. So already you know the data that we discussed in the previous example. So here forebearing of AB is 60 degrees that's why correct back bearing of AB should be equal to 60 plus 180 degrees that is 240 degrees. But as you see the back bearing of AB is 241 degrees. Hence, we have to deduct 1 degree with the observed bearing. Here, as we do so, we will be able to work out the corrected back bearing of AB which is nothing but 240 degrees. So, as we have applied the correction factor as minus 1 degree for B, whatever the lines that are starting from B need to be corrected with this particular correction factor. Here, under these particular circumstances, we have just one line stage, line BC. Hence, the bearing observed 115 degrees minus 1 degree, which is nothing but 114 degree will be corrected for bearing or line BC. Again, here add or subtract according to the prevailing case in order to work out its back bearing. Check with the actual observation, work out the correction factor and apply for subsequent lines and proceed with the calculations. Here, I would again suggest that it's better to draw sketch and studying and knowing 
and apply the corrections as are required. Let's try to solve certain problems. Here there is traverse A, B, C, D, A which is closed traverse. The forebearing and backbearing values are given. According to the data, the bearings are taken on the field where local attraction was suspected. So we wish to work out the correct values by applying the corrections. As I mentioned earlier, first step is by making use of these particular fore bearing and back bearing, draw the sketch for the given traverse. So, having this particular directional sense, your computations become easy. So, the next step is to work out the Include angles at each of the stations. So the way you see here, this particular angle A can be worked out as we deduct four bearing of AB from back bearing of DA, and the value is 53 degrees 10 minutes. Similarly, here we have the back bearing of line AB, we have four bearing of line BC, hence their difference will give us angle P. Already we have discussed these particular cases to understand how we can transform the bearings into included angles. So, as we work out all such included angles and as we find the sum, here the sum which is actually worked out is 360 degrees. Theoretically, it should also be 360 degrees and hence as both tally with each other there is no need to apply any kind of the correction as far as included angles are concerned. Now the next thing is to determine which stations are free from local attraction. So here for line AB as we work out the difference in between the fore bearing and back bearing, we get it as 180 degrees. Hence, we can assume that both the stations are free from local attraction. Hence, the values which are measured at station A and station B should be correct. Thus, fore bearing of BC should be correct as well as back bearing of DA should also be correct. So let's start the computations from four bearing of the BC by making use of our first method. Here it is 139 degrees 30 minutes which is correct value. Hence, in order to work out the back bearing of BC, we should add 180 degrees. It comes to be 319 degrees 30 minutes. Hence, the back bearing of BC is this value. As we deduct angle C from it, we will be able to work out four bearing of CD. With the same step here, it comes to be 190 degrees 20 minutes. We can deduct 180 degrees from that four bearing of CD, which gives 10 degrees 20 minutes. By referring to the sketch, by referring to the sketch, here four bearing of DA is worked out as 299 degrees 30 minutes. Now, as we did it 180 degrees from four bearing of DA, it should be the back bearing of DA, which is worked out as 119 degrees 30 minutes. Here it is nothing but the observed value, hence, all the calculations that we have performed are correct. As we do these particular calculations, we can tabularize the results in this particular manner. Line, observed forbearing, back bearing, corrected forbearing, back bearing, and say certain 
to Emacs. Let's make use of same data and with the reference to the sketch we will try to attempt the solution by making use of second method the way i discussed earlier so here for bearing of the bc which is correct we have added 180 degrees in order to compute the correct back bearing of bc 390 degrees 30 minutes here the observed value being less we have to add 40 minute in each of the readings so here the observed four pairing of cd is 189 degree 40 minutes plus the correction 40 minutes hence the correct four bearing of cd is 190 degrees 20 minutes. We will subtract 180 degrees from this and accordingly again the correction error component at D is worked out and similarly here just we can proceed with these particular calculations. As we complete the calculations and we wish to tabularize these particular results, you can follow this kind of table. This is example 2. I have given you the solution. You are provided with also the tabularized results. So my request is perform the calculations the way we discussed in earlier example by both the methods and check whether you can solve it correctly. Another way of expression of the bearings is nothing but ordinal system. So here certain data is given. The calculations for ordinal systems become quite easier if you are conceptually clear. See here. The value for line AB read as south 45 degrees 30 minute east and north 45 degree 30 minute west suggest that the bearing is remaining same, only directions are referred. Only directions that are referred are getting interchanged as we recall for bearing at back. Hence, this particular line AB and hence station A and B should be free from local attraction. As we discussed previously, for bearing of line BC should also be correct value, which is south 60 degrees east. Hence, this value will remain same, south will become north, east will become west in order to get correct back bearing of BC. But here as the observed value is more by 40 minutes, we have to deduct 40 minutes at station C. So here as we apply the correction, we will be able to work out the correct for bearing of CD as south 4 degree 50 minute east. Again, the correct back bearing of CD is north 4 degree 50 minute west but observed one is north 3 degrees 20 minute west hence the correction should be of plus 1 degree 30 minutes hence corrected for bearing of DA should be equal to north 85 degrees west the corrected back bearing of line DA would be south 85 degrees east. Here the back pairing of DA that is actually measured and the one which is indirectly worked out are tallying with each other hence the computations that we did are correct one. 
as we tabulated the results in earlier example in the same way here also you can tabularize the results this is the typical case which is more close to the actual circumstances in addition to local attraction the way we discussed there could be observational errors there could be certain climatic factors which could be influencing there could be certain say instrumental errors and because of that the bearings that we observe may not be giving the difference of 180 degrees see here we have drawn the sketch based on the values that we have by making use of this particular sketch the way we discussed previously we have worked out the incurred angles here for the given traverse having sides 5 the sum of incurred angles should be equal to 540 degrees but actually it is 542 degrees 30 minutes hence the sum should be corrected by distributing the excess that we have equally with appropriate sign. So here we have to deduct 30 minutes from each of the angles in order to compute the improved angles. Now we wish to determine the correct values. Here, as we see, all the stations are locally affected. But as we work out the deviation in the respective bearings for each of the lines, local attraction at A and B is weak, causing the less deviation of 1 degree 30 minutes. Hence, we can assume the line AB to be more correct one and hence we can correct the forward bearing and back bearing of AB by applying half of this particular deviation. So the corrected forward bearing of AB is 191 degrees 30 minutes plus 1 degree 30 minute by 2 which comes to be 192 degrees 15 minutes. So by making use of this corrected value, we can proceed the way we performed the calculations in last three examples. So here back bearing of AB is 192 degree 50 minute minus 180 degrees will give you 12 degree 15 minute. Similarly, here forward bearing of this particular AB is 192 degree 15, 15 minute to work out the forward bearing of BC, we can add angle B in the value of back bearing and hence the forward bearing BC is 68 degree 15 minute. Here, by referring to the sketch, as we deduct forward bearing BC plus 180 degrees which is nothing but the back bearing of BC as we deduct it from 360 degrees and subsequently as we deduct it from value of angle D which is corrected value here this particular red figures alphabets are representing the corrected included angles. So as we do so here just we can go on working out these particular corrected values and at the end as we work out this particular forward bearing of AB, the value we are getting is the same as that of from where we, from what we started with and accordingly here the calculations are acceptable. So I hope friends, what are the concepts that we tried to discuss are clear to you. So I thank you for your attention. In the coming presentation, I wish to discuss about the magnetic declination. 
variation in the magnetic radiant declination and how we can make use of it in land survey as well as we will get introduced with DPOP magnetic meter. So why till then? I wish you very happy learning. Thank you.